मैं तो दिल्ली यार दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन In the news tonight, Fijians urged to clean up compounds. Subsidy for government procured building materials. And 35 households assisted through Velomani Food Bank. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Speight. Fijians are being urged to clean up their compounds as continuous wet weather has increased the risks of waterborne diseases. The Ministry of Health is now launching a door-to-door -door campaign to combat leptospirosis, typhoid, dengue and diarrhea. Vini Narakautonga reports. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama says they are seeing a rise in illnesses that thrive in wet environments post-tropical cyclone herald. Our weekend of readiness and responsibility starts with our LTDD uh, campaign. Every Fijian should spend this weekend tracking down breeding grounds for mosquitoes, empty out containers, tires or rubbish uh, that hold water. Similar advice was given by Chief Medical Advisor Dr. Chemesa Tundravu. This weekend, we use the time that we spend at home, clean up our homes, clean up our compounds, clean up areas in our community that are um, possible breeding ground for vectors, for pests, um, and therefore for diseases. And we hope that by the end of the weekend, we are, our community and our villages will be a lot um, cleaner. Fijians are being urged to cooperate with medical teams as health screening efforts continue across the country. Venina Rakautonga, FBC News. Households earning less than $15,000 a year and have suffered loss during Tropical Cyclone Harold can now apply for assistance on a one-third, two-thirds basis. Eligible households will receive subsidy on the cost of government-procured building materials. Ritika Pratap with the details. The Prime Minister says under the Rural Housing Assistance Program, the Ministry of Housing and Community Development is working to provide relief to high-need households as quickly as possible. Those applying for assistance can cover the cost of all building materials, but pay more affordable rates thanks to government uh, bulk buying, and then have those uh, discounted materials delivered to them with all shipping costs covered, even in our most remote maritime communities. Trees that felled by the cyclone are also being repurposed into timber that will be provided free of charge for impacted homes by the Ministry of Forestry. Benimarama also highlighted that the Ministry of Housing will be providing free carpenters to the poor. And benefiting from this program who cannot secure carpenters of their own, the Ministry of Housing and Community Development's carpentry team, assisted by the Public Rental Board, will be provided free of charge for repairs and reconstruction. They will also be assisting with building plans to ensure the new homes are cyclone resilient and they'll also be carrying out site inspections to keep everything up to standard. The National Disaster Management Office's latest survey shows that 635 homes across the country were destroyed by tropical cyclone Harold with over 2,100 suffering damage. Ritika Pratap. FBC News. Nine of the ten patients who have recovered from COVID-19 have been sent home for self-isolation while one remains in hospital. Health Minister Dr. Iferemi Wanganabete says this has been done to ensure that the patients fully recover before they socialize with members of their communities. Pranita Prakash reports. Of the 10 patients who have recovered from COVID-19, a Nandi-based patient has asked to remain in hospital to serve a 14 days isolation period. Uh, we've been very grateful to have her. Uh, that doesn't change the dynamics of what we need to do. As we all are aware that uh, we've added uh, another caveat in terms of them going home and having another 14 day um, home uh, monitored uh, isolation. Health Minister Dr. Ifremi Wanginambete says these steps are necessary to avoid any re-emergence of cases. We want to be really sure that uh, those who have recovered and have gone home are completely well before again interacting on a uh, more free scale with the community at large. With screenings to continue, Fijians have been urged to cooperate with health officials. Our health teams are coming around asking questions when they are conducting the fever um, 
in the in the fever clinic as well as during contact tracing and when following up with our quarantine team when you are asked the question please be honest tell the truth there are currently 289 fijians at quarantine facilities in nandi and while none of these individuals have presented any symptoms to suggest that they have covid 19 fijians have been strongly urged to adhere to the advisories by the authorities pranita prakash fbc news Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Venangilio says while the COVID-19 operations continue, his officers also have to keep an eye on the criminal elements who are trying to take advantage of the current situation. Brigadier General Gilio says the force will maintain an increased presence throughout. He says they understand there are social issues which may lead to an increase in criminal activities, but officers should be serious with their work. Uh, I can't afford to let my police officers uh, drink and go on now with the relaxing of social uh, 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 gatherings. Uh, police premises and uh, all police premises, we, we're staying off Yangona and alcohol. We've got a job to do and we're serving the people of Fiji and we've got to do it in the right frame of mind. Around 35 households from the Muslim League settlement in Nambua today received food packs from the Velomani Food Bank. This was the first batch of distribution for the settlement under the Food Bank Initiative. The settlement, which is the site of two coronavirus cases in lockdown since April 3rd, and their quarantine period is expected to end on May 1st. Vinina Rakautonga with the details. A welcome sight for these residents who have had no access to the outside for almost 20 days now and their food rations were also running low. It's uh, very bad. It can't go anywhere. And uh, it's very t uh, tough for us the 14 days before. And uh, after that 14 days finished, another 14 days is going good now. Hussein says they received some assistance from Good Samaritans, which has kept them going. Very good. Very good. They help us. We're locked here almost 24 days now. And uh, God will bless them. And uh, we're looking for some more help here for some other companies or organizations. Eh? The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission, which is leading the Velomani Food Bank Initiative, has received overwhelming response. So we've sent 99 packs to uh, Soso in Lambasa and there's 35 packs here, along with uh, some other essential things like two families that require adult diapers, so there's adult diapers in the packs and basic, uh, basic food items. Uh, so each family gets two cartons and this should uh, last them for... Uh, approximately two weeks and then we'll follow up after two weeks. So. The Food Bank Initiative is a corporate social responsibility program initiated by the FCCC in collaboration with the Ministry of Commerce, Industry, Trade and Transport, Ministry of Housing and the Ministry of Local Government. Venina Rakotonga, FPC News. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama says the current crisis brought by the COVID-19 pandemic and TC Harold has proven that our Vuvale partnership is stronger than ever. Mbaini Marama says this Anzac Day Fiji, Australia and New Zealand are embroiled in conflict of a different nature as we battle with an invisible and insidious enemy, the novel coronavirus. He says while we're unable to physically gather this year due to restrictions in place to combat the spread of COVID-19, the spirit of sacrifice found within our brave Aussie and Kiwi families cannot be diminished by distance or disease. Fiji, New Zealand and Australia are all engaged in decisive campaigns to stomp out COVID-19, even as we in Fiji reckon with the ravages of Cyclone Herald. Both Australia and New Zealand have proven to be steadfast allies in our recovery from this uh, latest superstorm and both continue to support Fiji's campaign to ward off this uh, global pandemic, even while reeling from its impacts at home. The Prime Minister says all the three nations have reason to be optimistic in our COVID-19 containment efforts. Through this crisis, we are proving that our Wuwale is now more than ever stronger together. I have immense hope that on this Anzac Day and beyond, the same spirit of sacrifice and solidarity honored by this tradition will carry our people towards brighter days.
Up ahead, Leighton Garrasia to be laid to rest in Mavana. And market vendors welcome new arrangements. Radio Fiji One, Nandom. The cabinet has endorsed the mobilization of government resources to facilitate the funeral arrangements of former Prime Minister Laisen Yangarise. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama says his office will facilitate transportation and logistics. The late former Prime Minister will be laid to rest in his village of Mavana on Vanuambalavu. A chartered Fiji link plane will fly from Suva to Mavana, carrying the late Ngarise's body. His family will be transported by a government shipping vessel, while the Fiji police force will escort the boat from Suva to Mavana village. The Prime Minister has also extended his condolences to the family of Fiji's sixth Prime Minister in this difficult time. Villagers in the Yasawa group have been urged to adhere to restrictions implemented by the Fijian government. In a briefing, Assistant Roko Yasawa Nemani Tarotaro stressed that every Fijian needs to adhere to those restrictions to stop the spread of the coronavirus. He reminded the villagers that the restrictions are in place to protect them. The government delegation is currently in the Yasawa group distributing rations, conducting assessment for TC Harold, and also conducting awareness on COVID-19. The rural market vendors have welcomed the easing of certain restrictions implemented in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, as they are now able to sell their produce at the Suva market. Many of these vendors could not sell their produce when Suva went into lockdown, but are happy that things are slowly returning to normal. Apenisa Wangarandovu visited the market today. Lemivaro Sila from Bautailevu left home early this morning to get the best sport at the market as she missed out on sales for the past four weeks. I have been selling in No Sorry for four weeks and because there are many vendors and fewer customers, our income have been really low. But today my sales has been really good. Business for vendors are slowly getting back to normal. A group of women from Delindamanu in Naita Siri left their village after 5 a.m. this morning to sell their kai here at the supermarket. So far, they are pleased with their sales. It's been four weeks, then we are returning to the market. There's 10 of us. Financially, we were really affected, but now our kai is going. But we've been really lucky surviving with the little things we have from the farm. Sinatina Vuni Saravi, who sells inside the market, says he's pleased with the support from the Suva City Council during this difficult time. I'm just pleased that SEC has taken off the fees on some of the tables and also that the opening hours has resumed back to normal. The Wilbero boys are hopeful their business will also gain momentum soon. We are taking it slowly. Not many people are using our service yet. Most of the customers we know have not returned, so hopefully it will all be all right soon. The market hours have been reverted and it opens from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Apeniso Wangardovu, FBC News. The ceasing of flights and downturn of the tourism industry has not only affected exports, but the domestic sales of Please Global Limited. Hotels, resorts and restaurants are the major customers of the water bottling company. Marketing and HR Director Kate Please says their main export markets are China and the USA. She says while the U.S. has been holding up quite well, China has been really quiet since January. The company employs 120 Fijians and are trying to retain its staff. Some staff have actually gone on leave without pay due to reduced operations. And then further, the management and executives have all taken significant pay cuts scaled up to 50 percent. As the number of COVID-19 deaths continue to rise across the world, the search for a vaccine has taken a significant step. In sports after the break, Sports Councils loses around 2 million in revenue. 
and Commission analyzes football coaches' work permit. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. The Fiji Sports Council has lost $1.9 million in revenue after the closure of all sporting facilities in March amid the coronavirus pandemic. Chair Peter Maisie says 40% of the council's earnings are from the gate takings and hiring of events. The other 60% of revenue comes from the naming rights of their sporting facilities. Various uh, events that we had to cancel, like the Coke Games and the Mara Sevens, and a large number of other events have also been cancelled, like graduation ceremonies and church groups and everything that we receive income from. That has equated to around about 1.9 million in lost income. According to Maisie, on average, the council earns six million dollars annually, which is equivalent to 400,000 per month. Fiji football national coach Fleming Seretslev's work permit has been submitted to the Fiji National Sports Commission. The decision on the Danish national salary and any related pay cuts is now in the hands of the commission. Karolaini Tavi with the details. The Sports Commission chair will now analyze the work permit and issue a response to the Fiji FA soon. Football submitted the work permit documents yesterday, late yesterday afternoon. So we're just going through those as we speak and are responding back to football on it. His permit starts in March. Fiji Football Chief Executive Mohamed Youssef says they have to await a formal letter which is expected by Monday. The Sports Commission pays the salary. Uh, they, are, uh, they, they have got the details. Uh, going through the contracts and the work permit and everything. We yet to submit his uh, bank details so that that's where the salary is going to go. Eh? Fiji FA is confident that Sharislav will uplift the standard of football in the country with his wealth of experience. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. The Fiji Rugby Union Development Unit is re-strategizing its approach towards the development of sport in the country. The FRU has taken on a new initiative by introducing online coaching courses and rugby skills content series. Development manager Koli Sewambu and his team are using the digital platform to introduce more structural skills for players in isolation. So what we're doing um, with the development team at the moment is we're switching to online. So most of our level one courses will now switch to online. Uh, and we're using the, the Zoom platform for that. Uh, in all our courses, it's divided into three parts. It's normally uh, you register on the World Rugby uh, Passport uh, site uh, and you do your prerequisite online uh, requirements. The chaos at Rugby Australia is continuing with the resignation of Chief Executive Raylene Castle. The Kiwi fell on her sword after the board made it clear she no longer had her confidence. Taking a look at the weather, a weak trough of low pressure remains slow moving over northern parts of Fiji. Looking to the west, humid with sun and clouds, an afternoon thunderstorm in parts of the areas. And eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, mostly cloudy and humid, showers expected later. Up north, mostly cloudy and breezy. At sea, east to southeast winds, 10 to 15 knots, moderate seas. Turning to the tides, high tide at 8.26 p.m. with low tide at 2.19 tomorrow morning and sunrise is at 6.19. Now for tomorrow, it's occasional showers and isolated thunderstorms over Vanuolevu, Taviuni and nearby smaller islands and Lao and Lomaviti group. Cloudy periods with some showers and possible thunderstorms over interior and eastern parts of Viti Levu. Elsewhere, afternoon or evening showers expected. And tomorrow's temps, all centers to remain humid with temperatures reaching 32 degrees. Now recapping, the, now recapping the stories for tonight, Fijians urged to clean up compounds, subsidy for government-procured building materials, 
and 35 households assisted through Velomani Food Bank. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking, should banks consider a loan repayment holiday for at least a year? Visit our FBC website to answer. And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, by Facebook page FBC News, our Twitter page at FBC underscore news, or simply hashtag FBC News. That's it from the news desk this evening. From the team and I, stay safe, stay home. Good night. Toka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.